Did you, did you ever understand the futuristic concept of mama? For the last 10 years, they've been pushing it and there are lots of smart people thinking about what concept should we do each year. I mean, this year, I think it's gate to newtopia. You know what it's like? <laughs> you know what it's like? It's like neo-cultural technology. <laughs> They operate on a whole new level and lots of people don't quite get it, but it seems cool at the same time. Can we, can we take a moment to recognize the gender biases in MAMA? Have you ever noticed that the best new male artist always comes before the best new female artist? Mm -hmm. I bet you didn't notice. Or that the best male group award always comes before the best female group award. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's kind of like the social security numbers. If you're born in Korea and you're a male, then your social security number will start with a one. If you're born female, then your social security number will start with a two. It's like these very subtle things that are repeated over time. They seem harmless, but you know, as someone who's trying to promote the critical consumption of K-pop, I want people to notice. I want people to recognize it. I actually have a dream. I, I, I have a dream that one day mama will put the female group awards before the male group awards or you know what even further i have a dream that one day mama will get rid of the gender categories and will use more inclusive language <laughs> do you think that's do you think i'm being too progressive here or is that something that we see coming in the future Speaking of OG K-pop, who remembers the day when Mama was called MKMF? Can I get a show of hands? <laughs> I think 2008 was the last time they were called MKMF, and then in 2009, they rebranded. For those of you listening, comment below if you prefer this candid, less edited kind of radio version conversation rather than the more edited, fast, um, videos that I'm kind of used to doing. I'm curious to hear everyone's thoughts. <laughs>